to keep this kind of short because I hate speaking in front of people because <laughs> I'm really nervous. Um, so basically, I got involved by accident. I was in college and I had to do a project about world religion and like new religious movements or whatever. And um, I came across Scientology and I didn't know anything about it except for the fact, you know, Tom Cruise and John Travolta because that's all everybody really knows about it. So I decided to, as, as part of the project, I had to interview a person from this religious group. So I set up, can I say his name? Yeah, sure. Um, Jared Ryan, um, the We're all <laughs> <laughs> um, the, spokes, the spokesman for Scientology in Ireland. I set up an, an interview with him, and I went to interview him for my project. And he made it sound like really cool, and like you know, because I was always interested in finding like faith, I guess. Um, like I'm always interested in what's what's out there. So he made it sound really like um, spiritually cool. So I handed my project in, and then a few days later, I called back and I done the personality test. And then I bought my first Scientology book, which was a new slant on life. I think it was that one. And I thought it was like the best thing I ever read. I was like, oh, this dude is so cool. And so I just decided to keep going back. And then I got some auditing done, which was interesting. <laughs> and um, it wasn't long before I joined staff. And um, that was really funny <laughs> because um, I know it says it on one of the posters somewhere, but. I would work there many, many hours and I would do all sorts of things and don't get me wrong, I wasn't doing it for the money at the time, obviously, because I had a job, but um, like they told me I would get paid and I got paid. <laughs> I got handed two euro in an envelope once, months later, and I got my bus fare home that night, so thank you. <laughs> um, um, also, one, one of the times, um, I thought it was kind of funny, I got a telling off from my, who was it? Some probably my ethics officer, I can't remember. Basically, I was on the um, you know, the call list when I was like ringing people around to try and get them to come back in and like to buy books and all that jazz. And um, I was like, hi, this is Gabrielle from Scientology and Dianetics or whatever. And I actually got a telling off for using the word Scientology. <laughs> I was told I can't use the word Scientology. I have to use Dianetics because I guess people hear Scientology and just shit themselves. So I wasn't allowed to <laughs> use it. Um, what, two of the main reasons why I left was because I was asked to disconnect from my mother because she was a suppressive person, and obviously, which they did not, and also because the increase in pressure to take out loans and money for me, especially, it was just too much. So in the end, I just um, pretty much left, and um, I feel like I've, I'm leaving out so much. Did you think of anything? I don't think. Uh, I think you're doing a great job. Um, um, what did you have to do for your two euro? Oh yeah, <laughs> the whole shiny two euro. And like I used to have to, oh yeah, yeah I forgot to no. So I was also training to be a Dianetic Auditor. I started the um, Harvard Dianetic Auditors course and um, I thought it was great. <laughs> like look at me being an auditor. And um, oh, I just want to point out as well that um, one of my pre clears at the time, obviously I'm not going to mention her name, but she was a really nice girl. But she was really mentally screwed up. Like, um, I just thought, like, th thinking back on it, like, she needs, she needs actual help. Like, I mean, she needs to be in a place that th that can actually treat her because she was so low tone. Like, you know, she was just really, really depressed. And so, what I was doing at the time was probably making things worse. But I thought I was making her better. So, um, it's just, I just mean, it's really, it's a shame and it's really sad when you see people with actual, actual mental conditions, like. And they're being told that they're getting the best treatment when they're really not, and it's just really sad. And um, shall I shall I tell the story about the dog? Um, <laughs> or is that another story? You're in a room full of SPs. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. My ethics officer, who shall remain nameless, <coughs> she no, well, and this was dead serious. I'm not making this up. She told me, no, she said this so serious to me. She told me that suppressive people. Suppressive people like to get their dogs to shit in their mouths. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm not lying, that is actually what she does. <laughs> and um, at the time I started laughing because I was so uncomfortable. Like, what was I meant to do? Like, just sit there and agree with her? And she's like, yeah, well, that's not funny. And then they could they, they was like, but you know, it is funny. Like, and she was like, but this is very serious. And I was like, sure it is, but like, you know. <laughs> Dude, and then she they concluded that I had an engram to do with laughing because I laughed at the at the but you know who wouldn't laugh it's disgusting <laughs> but yeah I had an engram to do with um, laughing in dog poop probably I don't know but um um what else.
remember the reason they were pressuring you for courses at that time? The what? The reason they were pressuring you to buy more <laughs> at that time, why they needed Oh, yeah. Um, oh, the new building. <laughs> um, when I was in Scientology, they were in, in this building. And they said that they needed money so badly to pay for the lease for the new... Uh, no, I was promised a new, exciting, brilliant building. It turned out the mission moved right next door to the hairdressers. <laughs> like, literally just a door over is where they moved. You can see it. It's, like, this is the old mission and this is the new mission. So, it's, it's failed. <laughs> but we were promised a new, big, exciting building, which we didn't get. But, um, yeah, that was that. Um, I feel like I'm leaving it. I should have written something down, but I didn't. Oh yeah, I had to go and talk to all my friends, like handle. Oh, actually, I forgot the thing about you. No, I'm just the game here. Oh yeah, actually, I'll say that. That was funny. Um, okay. Oh god. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I was in Scientology, I was friends with this guy here. Hi. Um, even though I wasn't meant to be, but like he was. I know he was a decent guy, and you know I still kind of kept in contact with him. And um, they knew that I was talking to him, so they pulled me on the email. It wasn't an official, officially a sex check, but. They put me on the e-meter and um, <laughs> they basically asked me what the nature of our relationship was and, you know, was I getting physical with the anonymous guys? <laughs> so I was like, no. <laughs> but um, they just, they checked me for it, um, probably about an hour or so, just on the nature of my friendship with the mad hair and, <laughs> and um, what was going on and what we were talking about and stuff like that. And, and um, all my friends actually, yeah. They, they were smarter than me, they had Googled so much about Scientology, so they were trying to like, you know, tell me to get out and get out, but um, obviously I was stupid. But um, they told me, to, um, my ethics officer, again, the, the dog shitter, she told me to um, like make separate appointments with all my friends in the one day, like, you know, to meet up at a coffee house or somewhere and just to handle every single one of them. And then I had to report back to her and, and, and you know, tell, like, tell them how it went and what they said and that kind of thing. And my friend, um, I think it was Owen, it was funny, he actually said he wasn't worried about Scientology until I tried to handle him. Now he's really worried about Scientology because he thinks that's so freaky <laughs> that they would make me do that. But he actually hadn't been lowered before, but then he was. So that was funny. Um, I think, obviously, I would tell them it's not. So I think because of South Park and like wrong, I love South Park, but all of but I think people think it's kind of funny. Like you, they just kind of see the funny side of it because you know, oh, Zinu Ha and all that, which I find funny. Don't get me wrong, it's hilarious. But um, I don't, I don't think people see the the kind of the serious side of it. They just kind of see like, ha, Tom Cruise jumping on the sofa, ha. you know, like it's that kind of. So it's, it's the yeah. 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 Oh, actually, I should just mention that before. Um, was it, I think it was last week, just before the event, there was like an OSA troll, troll trolling the the um, Dublin Offline's page, and um, just like, it's funny to mention that he posted on my Facebook page accusing me of being an alcoholic, <laughs> trying to say that I had a drinking problem. I don't, I don't even drink anymore, but it was just funny that you know he, they were going around trying to cause all sorts of trouble with diff with Pete, especially and um, Samantha Domingo. They were just going around trolling all sorts of you know, horrible shit, and then trying to accuse me of being. A wino. So yeah, I just thought I'd put that in there. It was so. great entertainment. Mm, it was. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Gary.